channel and as I promised I'll be posting my second video so today um, I'll be discussing about my IgA diagnosis so back in 2016 um, I was uh, 2016 of June uh, I woke up with difficulty of breathing and um, I tried to calm down thinking that it's gonna go away because it happened to me many times and it went away so I just continue with my daily stuff um, but in the afternoon that day things get worse to the point that I cannot um, I'm having a hard time to walk or having a hard time to, to do my thing so and then my my chest pain is really getting bad to the point that um, every time I breathe in I feel like it crushes my chest and same with same when I breathe out so I decided to go to the ER and immediately when I arrived there they took my blood um, blood test vital signs and um, they found out that I have a very high blood pressure um, if I remember it's 170 170 over 100 and the rest of my vital signs are also high and my they also found out that there's a uh, high levels of protein in my urine and also same it's like there's also a blood in the urine so with the result uh they decided to keep me in for monitoring and they also started um medication like blood pressure medication um my doctor said that basing on my blood test uh I have an impaired kidney and then I need to be monitored so I stay there for three days and I when my and when my blood pressure went better um, they discharged me and advised me to come back in uh, in a month so after that I went home um, tried to uh, try to take it easy, read things about kidney, and then continue new my medication. But after a week or two, things get worse. I felt dizzy, I felt weak, I felt severe pain in, in my left upper quadrant. So I decided to go back to the ER again, did the test, did all this uh, ultrasound, and my doctor said that uh, it's it's all related to my kidney and that um, and that make me realize that it's it's a serious thing and it feels like I it feels helpless or hopeless because um, I thought we I thought I can manage it I can manage it and just go back to normal life but uh, with all the symptoms it seems like uh, things are getting serious so yeah so i went back home again and wait for uh, my next schedule so on june Ju no june it's july july 9 i was scheduled for biopsy um i felt a little bit uh, nervous about that because it's a needle and i'm scared um, I read some reviews about that and then they said that um, it's it's like a pinch but some says that it's also painful so for me I hope that it's not that bad it's not that painful because I already have a lot of pain and I don't want more <laughs> so yeah so when I went there uh, um, they gave me some instruction they asked me to sign papers and they started by giving me anesthesia at my back and then they put the first needle and I can say that that's one of the worst pain, I, pain I've ever felt it felt like all my organs are uh, are being pulled and it's really painful to, to the point that I cried and I tried to stop them and then they said that um, they cannot they cannot they cannot complete the procedure if we stop so um, they asked me if I want to stop then I have to I have to sign a paper I have to sign a paper saying that I, I refuse the procedure at that moment I feel like I feel like um, 
I want I want to do the procedure because I wanna I wanna know my diagnosis. I wanna I wanna move on and con and and do my treatment. But at the same time, the pain is really killing me. That that I'm having a hard time to decide. But but at that moment, there's this there's this word that came into my mind that gives me strength. Um, the word says, do not fear for I am with you. And it keeps on coming and coming, coming into my mind. My body is, my body felt so weak, but these words give me strength to, to, to continue it. And so I just told them, so I'm going to continue. And so, yeah, so I did the procedure. And then after that, um, uh, they brought me back to my room. I stayed there for four hours without movement because they said that um yeah i have to be i have to be very careful because of the wound so i stayed there and um the nurses are very 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 helpful they assist me in everything i do especially going to the bathroom and um because of the pain i end up staying there for four days um in my stay there um um, the, re the results of my biopsy came in and uh, my doctor confirmed that I have an IgA nephropathy and with the 39, 39 tissue that they took from, from my biopsy, they found out that uh, 30 is already, already scar, meaning it cannot be reversed anymore, meaning that my stage is already advanced and that um, and that um, oh, yeah so meaning meaning the stage is already advanced and and my doctors uh, mentioned about uh, future future treatment that I'll be needing he mentioned dialysis and um, transplant um, hearing those words coming out from here from him is like it's like a bomb that just exploded in my in front of me it's it's hard it's hard to you know like all of a sudden you're gonna all of a sudden things change and then you're gonna look forward for dialysis or 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 transplant so I find it really hard that time so yeah, um, after that, uh, I decided to go back home to Philippines to continue my medication and treatment there. So with the help of my doctor in Hong Kong, my doctor in Philippines uh, was able to start my treatment. So she started me with uh, she started me with high dose prednisone, vitamins, and also also assisted me in my like in like he gave me advice on how 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 to change my lifestyle how to try to deal with it with it um it was it was it was okay um i was able to manage it manage it it's just that um i just had a hard time with my prednisone because it it has a lot of side effects and and um and and my body is not used to it so it's a little bit hard and my kidney function is um, i can say it's kind of like a roller coaster that it went up and down up and down but uh um but still a little bit stable kind of like that so yeah so i continue my medication i try not to i try not to and I try not to be stressed and just relax. And then for that year, I didn't work. I just focus on gaining my strength back. And in 2018, I moved here in Canada. Uh, I continue my medication. I try to work. And um, my kidney function... It's, it's the same but it's it yeah it's it also goes it's like slowly going down but 
but I know that things is gonna happen. So recently, my doctor said, uh, maybe we. My doctor decided to stop my prednisone because I have a lot of uh, side effects and it's not good. It's not good for me, and he thinks that um, it's not working anymore. So we stop. We stop the. We I stop my prednisone. So when I stop my prednisone, things get really bad. Um, I started to feel weaker, uh, pain, more pain, and then um, I get so exhausted every time. And um, and the worst thing is I started to cough up blood, and that lasted for almost two months. Um, I thought it's probably withdrawal, like prednisone withdrawal, and so I reported that to my doctor, and. He said that he's going to monitor me and then he referred me to another doctor, another nephrologist. And then um, I met my new nephrologist and then, and then she said that I'm, I'm having a flare up and my, my functions are really low. And so, and so she put me back to high dose prednisone. Um, I'm a little bit scared about that, but um, because of the side effects, but um, I'm just gonna let that prednisone do its own job, and then I'll do mine. And then the doctor, my doctor also mentioned that I might, that I'm having a symptoms of vasculitis, which means uh, it's possible that some of my organs were affected. So she, she scheduled me with some tests and other appointments and figure out what's, what's really going on. And yeah, it's very overwhelming knowing that um, aside from that IgA, I still have, it's possible that I might have other kind of, you know, like illnesses, but I have a very good support that's, you know, very helpful. Um, uh, my doctor is very, very uh, approachable. I can, um, I can reach to her anytime. I can message her. Um, she also calls me um, just to, you know, like during, like there's one time she called me Sunday just to make sure I'm doing okay and I'm really, really happy about that because uh, uh, it gives me hope, like like having, having this support makes me continue the fight. So whoever, whoever is having the same situation as mine, um, I would suggest to reach out to your supporter and look for a good doctor that can really help you uh, because it's really you know like it's really helpful to know that you know someone someone cares and um, someone is you know like there to help you and guide you to you know to get your health back so yeah so reach to your supporters and um, you know, um, I know sometimes it's it's hard to explain things because of our their symptoms are very different but um, there will be people that's gonna be, you know, listening to you. And in, if ever you have flare up, um, um, you shouldn't you shouldn't wait for things to get worse. You should, you know, you should go reach and reach for help. And if you need someone to talk to, you can always message me. If you want to see more of my videos, please don't forget to subscribe by clicking the button below. And if you have anything you'd like to tell me. Please leave a message and I'll respond to them. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.